OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good afternoon. We are the Valley Girls. We're the two site. <laughs> Two site, one project team from Apple Valley Adult School and Victor Valley College uh, joined together in sacred partnership by AB86. And we want to share with you our endeavors and pilot program. So I am Martha Mendez. I'm the Adult Education Regional Consortium Manager. And I'm not sure why this isn't advancing. When something like this happens, Adele has to move away from the technology. <laughs> then, and then it sometimes starts working. So, oh, there we go. So, um, yeah. The theory has been proven. <laughs> I'm Martha Mendez. I'm the Adult Education Regional Consortium Manager for our area. And I'm also um, the grant manager over the WIOA um, grant for Victor Valley College, overseeing uh, the um, components that have to do with the grant for ESL and GED as well. And um, our team consists of, we've lost one team member. She's been promoted. Um, Lilia Aguirre was with us previously. And today we have Rebecca Monharaj. She joined us in January. Um, and our offsite team consists of Jessica Bernardo. She's our ESL and GED counselor, adult ed counselor. And Cheyenne Laguna, who is our CASAS testing coordinator. And we also have our dean who oversees our division. Her name is Dr. Tarango. She's been promoted to associate VP as well and has been very supportive of our endeavors and comes from adult education. So something we're really proud of um, having that support. And now I'll take over. My name's Adele McLean and I'm from I'm from Apple Valley Adult School. <laughs> <laughs> I have a magnetic personality that tends to work you know, work on computers in a not so great way. Um, <laughs> I want to tell you who I have here with me, uh, Claudia Escobar, my office coordinator, and Melina Bazada, who is my admin clerk too, and also our student success story of the year. So, um, <laughs> from, o for o from OTAN, thank you. Um, the reason that I chose office staff to bring on this endeavor with me is that we want to change systems. We want to change forms. If we really want to make those kinds of changes, you need people who work with those systems and forms. And I know that's a unique way of looking at it, but I think we've had we've done some tremendous work already so far this year. I also did not want to forget to thank, we have Christina Hyatt, Woo! who's an amazing support person. She has made us meet every week. We started with 10 minutes. We've been putting in a half hour, sometimes two hours, because what we're dedicated to is something much bigger than us that I hope will last for the next decade at least of change. Um, I also want to thank Dr. Zachary and Dr. Rublitis for encouraging me to apply for this unique situation to OTAN. I just can't thank OTAN enough for their help in this project. All right, guys, so I just wanted to introduce um, what what made us and how I got here, my diploma. Uh, we do offer construction um, and EKG 12 lead. We also do graphics and those three are actually articulated with Victor Valley College. Those are our CTEs. Um, we also have this beautiful lab and our graphics, the, which we're not promoting right now, but we are. <laughs> um, and I wanted to show you our beautiful new um, updated campus. We actually got uh, two computer labs. We also have two cards with um, Chromebooks. Um, and those were COVID funded, please. Let's keep that, <laughs> let's make that straight. Um, but we were able to um, update a lot of our rooms and we're really proud of um, what we're accomplishing right here with our rooms and where we're able to provide to our students for a better education. So <clears throat> these are some of the numbers from Apple Valley Adult School and uh, numbers that matter for me. First of all, I, I want to say that I'm considered a rural adult school. They do a rural classification because I have people that travel a really long distance to get there. Um, and uh, let's see, I have right now three, 530 unduplicated students served this year so far. Um, in the past, we have received three promising practice awards, one on a transitional educational plan, 
our regional graduation actually made uh, national news with COABE. And then um, our E&E &E surveys, last year we actually had 100%, this year only at 83. So, <laughs> but we also have done many presentations on how other agencies can improve their E&E &E surveys using our strategies. Um, let's see, I have four adult education credentialed teachers, only one is full time, but uh, several of my staff have applied for it during the pandemic to get an actual adult education credential on top of either their single subject or multiple subject credentials. Uh, my lead teacher that I hired full time actually will be graduating with her TESOL masters this Saturday, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my ESL teacher was, my, the ESL teacher for VVC is one of my former high school graduates mm -hmm. and she graduated from VVC as valedictorian. Mm -hmm. um, we have the highest graduation rate re regionally and we have the lowest per pupil cost. Um, this is from the past uh, basically a year and a half. We have uh, 53 certificates, um, but each one of those got, the, or the student received three college credits and 10 high school credits at the same time. We hopped onto articulated courses already offered by our high school. This makes it easy for me to find teachers for those positions. I also wanted to add in here a thought I had with your presentations today that if you're looking for credentialed teachers for healthcare and your school has applied for a community schools grant, they're gonna be increasing the number of nurses. There's your teachers. Next slide. <laughs> uh, let's, I believe it's now Ms. Yes. Martha okay. Mendes. So um, I just want to take a step back because I stood up in front of you guys and you're such amazing professionals that I forgot to mention that Rebecca Monharaz is our transition counselor who's been with us since 2019. She's our transition counselor for our region. She's helped over 400 students, uh, worked on them into you know one-on-one um, -on -one appointments and in group settings, but she's also CCAE award recipient of the year. So, um, you know, and I, so I wanted to mention that because um, what she does is so important and crucial to what we do, which is why we brought her in. Um, and with that, I mean, she works primarily with our um, transition students, but because our goal is to transition students from a level one and two ESL to the college system, that's why it was so important to have her with us. So in terms of Victor Valley College, just to give you the context, we are a small size college. We received over 10,000 FTSs. Our unduplicated enrollment is 17,000. Um, but I think some of the really significant things that you're not seeing up here is that um, in 2012, we were on the verge of losing our accreditation. And I think that's significant because we had a new superintendent who's, um, who was president when we started AB 86. And his number one charge to us was build the relationships and nothing else matters because at that point, um, our relationship with our community was not where it needed to be. And I say that because we're in a completely different place now. So he re retired in 2019 or 18. And then we had uh, another superintendent, um, Dr. Walden, whose charge was excellence and developing excellence and doing things with purpose and very supportive of our consortia work. <laughs> so. Where we're at now is we're um, ranked among the top 10 for our student outcomes, which is amazing. We didn't think we were going to be even close to these um, outcomes. We were also just recently, as of yesterday, awarded um, excellence and equitable course placement in math for our college. So among 56 colleges, we were top. So for us, this is like really like us. You know, if you're thinking about 10 years ago and where we're at now, but most importantly is the, uh, the, the um, ability and the place and the space to partner with our community. So we're really proud of that work and the support that we receive from our leadership. So that gives you the context of you know, why we're doing what we do. Um, Victor Valley ESL, I mean, Victor Valley College serves a region of 1,700 that's square miles. When we say we have a vast region and this is why partnership is so important. Um, basically, this is sort of give you the overview. It's like on the off of the 15 freeway on your way to Vegas. That's where we're at. And so VVC is the the larger red star, and we only offered ESL courses on the um, star that's that way at one point, just there. And so Apple Valley was this area that um, needed a service. That's how we identified that we needed to partner to do this. Um, we have three satellite locations. We offer classes now at Apple Valley as of a year ago, um, Hesperia, and on our main campus as well. Um, yeah, and we're expanding to include uh, Victor Elementary School District. We're partnering with um, 
uh, other agencies in the area that have requested our courses as well because it's the only way to reach the community. So in terms of adult ed programs, um, the pandemic really affected our enrollment, I mean, very severely. We were down to less than 40 students. And honestly, could I really say that we had 40 active students? Probably not. It was very sad because um, it was difficult. The digital divide was very evident. And um, we tried to do things where they would come in and do like drive through training and drive through help desk. Um, we gave away, not give away, we assigned the books. <laughs> we didn't get them all back. Um, but where we're at now, um, we have 219 for spring, um, almost 300 for the year that we served. That's unduplicated enrollment from where we, at, we were at in the pandemic. We started a GED class a year ago. We have we started with, I don't know, 10, 11 students, and now we have 33. Um, we also now have um, these non-credit programs, and we do dual enrollment, which Rebecca does a wonderful job in assisting those students. We offer uh, all of these levels of ESL courses. Um, something new for us that came as a result of our partnership, we were able to identify the need for synchronous, asynchronous hybrid courses. So all of our CORs went back to curriculum and they're being, they have been approved for hybrid. And come the fall, we'll have them CDCP approved so that we're, gonna, so that we're able to offer those certificates to our students as well as additional um, basic computer skills courses. And we're still working on vocational ESL. We're not there yet. So, and passing it on. <clears throat> um, so my role is the transition counselor, kind of like an umbrella. That's what I had put it like in my notes. So it's funny that the um, group before me described it as umbrella. So um, the student population, I it's like I serve several students. I need to know like what category they're in. But essentially, sometimes they all will um, start off in one category and then transition into like a different pathway. So <laughs> students who have graduated with high school diploma, GED, they wanna start college. So I'll meet with them and help with their transition. Or students who are um, still in working towards high school diploma, GED, but they wanna start college courses now. Well, let's do dual enrollment. Or students who are um, ESL, we can get them started. We offer levels one through six. Um, but then undocumented students as well. Sometimes I'll get students and they're undocumented, but they want to do something. They want to better their lives for themselves and for their family. And so I say, okay, let's start with ESL. So we start with the ESL non-credit, they work their way, and then now they have um, their English skills. So, okay, let's get into the um, high school diploma program. They're working towards high school diploma, and then we do the dual enrollment and um, they're getting that college credit, and then um, that leads into them being able to qualify for AB 540. So now their status changes from, to a California resident uh, meeting the requirements, and now they can apply to the DREAM Act. So there's all these little awesome details that um, I think is just super impactful. Um, so I meet with students at um, each of the five adult schools, and I offer to meet with them there or at our campus at the college, and I will do group meetings or individual appointments. So the goal is basically matriculation, so the steps to enrollment and then connecting students with the student support programs that are available at the college, um, <clears throat> and ultimately helping in navigating um, what their goal is, what is their personal academic career goal. Each student is different, so it, it always um, varies in what the plan is going to be, but ultimately um, helping them in what their goal is. So that was a great introduction, a great team. So I'm gonna talk about the why we're here. And for those in Zoom, that was our first project right here. And if you saw, very artistic. I took an art class for that. Um, obviously, it was from a kindergarten, but um, that is our why. That's what we thought this group was going to be. Two rows, meeting in the middle, and going on from there. Unfortunately, if you have Siri, Google Maps, you get rerouted every 10 minutes. Right, Christina? Okay. So this is where we're at now. This has been a process. We went from a Y to an H to a left to, to a, a right, right, turn around, make a U Two turn. Turns. We've been everywhere trying to figure out how two separate teams can make this work for one community, okay? Um, and that's why we're here. 
we had to partner up. Like Martha was saying, we're in a rural area. You saw the little, you know, little stars, the big star. It's a lot of area to cover. And we really, when we say rural, that means people are not driving. Uh, buses that pass every hour. So if you missed it, you're gonna wait another hour. So we need to make sure that our locations, BBC locations, where would they needed to be. So we were partnering because we needed them. And they needed us. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, our district was really hit with the pandemic. Not only BBC, CSL. Our district pretty much lost our ESL community. And that was sad. You know, because it was COVID, they're not coming, they're not, you know, computer savvy. So how do we help them? So this role has also been a little bit about trying to get them back to our community, you know? So we needed to do that. We needed to see what we were not funding or what we were not reaching based on funding needs. Uh, we needed to expand our CTE. We had ideas, we had, um, the passion to do it, but we needed more help. And it's okay to ask for help, and sometimes we forget that. Um, we had that in our uh, SIP plan, you know, to be able to track our transition. Ms. Rebecca has been doing a great job with that. We were trying, um, I think we had like a little Excel and calling students, hey, did you make it to the college or not? Mm -hmm. It's not easy like that. So they were able to help us do that too. Um, but <laughs> this was gonna be where we were gonna come together right here and really make this partnership work. Not for us, I mean, we were getting the benefit because we were getting the extra help, but really we were meeting that need in our community. I think go back one. I had a couple of notes to add oh. to, the, to that. Thank you, Claudia, for the explaining that. I think um, also we just really need to need, because of the vastness of our region, we needed to meet our students there, and she's absolutely right that we needed the enrollment as well. Um, we needed to reach the students and um, we were able to fund that out of general funds. And, um, but the other thing that we really needed to do was introduce our new onboarding ESL faculty to a different environment that was gonna be supportive. And um, because we operate in three different sites, the truth is community college can be rather impersonal at times for new faculty. So uh, partnering with Apple Valley, um, if you don't know, you become family. And so you're always offered a cup of coffee. Um, we walk in like if they're our family. And we knew that our ESF faculty coming in were gonna feel the same type of warm welcome and our students would as well. So the intent was to create that environment and sort of start um, front loading with this is how we do things. And so whoever's onboarding is receiving that type of support and do you need copies and do you need this because it's not always available at other sites unfortunately we do the best that we can but um that's the other um truth um i'm just being very sincere with that part here um, but we wanted to examine operations we wanted to provide that environment and then of course the low attendance and one remarkable thing about this is that our attendance has just been um, so much better for that and our students also receive bus passes, um, free bus passes for being BBC ESL students. Um, they receive bus passes, so that's also empowering and allows them another, you know, access to another resource um, and um, counseling and supportive services that are at our main campus. We're trying to bring those over, but we're not there yet, so. So remember the why. We're here with the why. We got here because of a why, but we don't know what to do, how to do it, or where we were going, right? So. They had me oh, speak about this because I guess I was the most passionate <laughs> one. Yes. I guess I shared it every time I went back to office. Guys, she has a quicker. I have new ideas. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they wanted to put me in a room. It's like, hush already, girl. Um, but, you know, how did coming here, you know, how to Ideal 101, how to DLAG, everything help us to make these goals, to make these ideas, dreams, you know, that we wanted to do? Oh. Hey. Everybody, I heard everybody team building. Everybody thinks, because we're in a school, oh, you guys are great at team building. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> you know. Sometimes it's even harder, you know. I thought we were great, I was like, I always say, we. and I tell people when they come into our school, we're a family here, you know. I'm usually the crazy aunt, but we're our family. But it doesn't mean sometimes we work well as a team, you know. All the personalities sometimes, you know, clash or our ideas or, Sometimes we don't have grace with each other, I think. So coming here 
And I'm telling you, that first class, I saw Adele, who I love, <laughs> in a whole new light. Like, I was like, I've been coming at this all wrong, you know? Um, and that was good. I think all of us had like an awakening moment, like, huh, basement, balcony, where am I at, you know? And, and really kind of learning something, not only to help the team, but for ourselves. Um, the Gallup training, I just extended mine. I, I, I got the whole shebang, you know, so I was very interested in that. But it was good because we did use it to kind of see, okay, what are our strong points? But also, okay, this is a weakness here, but how can we bring that up? You know, how can that weakness be our strength? Because I learned that too. I think you we know? use it in assigning sort of the roles yeah. too. So some of those tasks, we absolutely have looked at the strengths. We know, for instance, like Rebecca, Claudia, and Lilia, who's not who's moved, you know been promoted, have handled some of those those tasks that require structure and sort of bringing the technical pieces together, mm -hmm. um, because that's their strength. And we so we drive structure people crazy. Yes. <laughs> so we're like, yes, we can do it. We're great dreamers. So. <laughs> But and they're like focus. You can't do like the 20 things you want to do. It's going to have to be this big. And that really helped us narrow our focus. <laughs> they will learn, we say. They will learn. Um, yeah, narrow our focus. You know, really getting a site plan going. You know, when you're a small school, you know, you kind of sometimes, I, I felt at times that, hey, we're just kind of going in the road and we're going to figure it out somehow. There's no real roadmap. We'll just, you know, kind of go and see where we end. But this does kind of help to structure everything and organize what we're trying to do. And, and we need that, you know? And it helped our school to learn our value too. Apple Valley Adults College, like we had this talk in the office once like, you know, we can't treat like, oh, that's their program and this is ours. Or, because then there was not this welcoming because we didn't want them to be, oh no, that's a VBC class, so uh, we don't help them. No, no, it was our, it's to work together. So that was something we had to actually kind of figure out in our office staff kind of thing, like, no, 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 we're here, this is our community, we're gonna all, all hands on deck. And there honestly figuring like it that. out and communicating it to us, because at first I think there was a little apprehension. Mm -hmm. Adele was the buffer <laughs> and said, I feel as though this is, and you know, I said, well, the reason we can't do that is because I have to go through three people to do this paper process, it's ad hoc, and they're like, oh. So I'm like, you know what, let's, let's go on a tour yeah. and, and let me introduce you to our process and what yeah. we have and, to do. And we'll, we will see that in a couple slides, what yeah. they did to help us feel a little more comfortable to, I think we were talking about yesterday, like what do we do when we feel like that? You listen to what the other person is trying to tell you. They're not being, you know, off uh, on you, it's just they're either scared, they're either confused, they really don't understand. But if you take the time to listen and say, okay, I hear what you're saying, let me see how I could help you get here. And they did that, and I appreciate that, you know. Um, things we learned, like I said, team building, handling the conflicts here, because there were, like I said, it's two separate school, two separate, two, uh, um, rules, contracts. Sometimes we will forget that, yeah, Martha has to go through three people to get to the person she wants. I go to Adele and she finds whoever she needs to go to. You know, and that was it. And we needed to remember that. Um, communication skills. Something so small <laughs> creates such a big problem sometimes. But it was very important that they, we needed to work like, hey, you guys gotta send an email or let us know who's coming. And we're seeing the difference that small little skill has made to actually help the student. And of course, using and encouraging our strength. We forget to do that, honestly. I think even as adults, you, you know, we just forget to, hey, you're doing a great job. Hey, that was a great idea. It doesn't take much, you know, but it does help get the team going and getting that push because sometimes we become tired. We become discouraged. We look at the students like, why, you know, the numbers that we're seeing like this, well, that's a sad number. You do get there, but you know what? If we kind of encourage each other, we get back up and keep on going. So we're gonna talk about those accomplishments. Mm -hmm. So just in summary, we have served um, at Apple Valley Adult School over 200 ESL students since spring of 2022. 
We started with one class that filled up in 10 days, I think, roughly, maybe less. Um, and it was one of those things where um, we went to Dr. Tarango and I said, uh, we would like to do this. And it sort of broke the, broke the mold because it's we had to follow a different model for um, creating a schedule outside of um, what the normal scheduling system is for a community college. Um, and then it filled up right away. So we, we start, initially we were like, we're going to offer level two and three, Apple's gonna do level one. But the truth is that Apple said, we just really need a level one right now. And then we will gladly work with you to do the level one eventually, but right now let's start. And, um, and so we said, okay, let's do that. And then we realized, um, we had we filled up. So next semester we offer two in fall. We're doing three now, and for fall we're offering four sections. And these classes are um, ex exceed capacity at the teacher's discretion um, in many cases, and or they're at capacity. And those are usually 25 students in a class. So um, really exciting. These are some pictures that um, you know from our celebration at Apple Valley. So we had our administration attend as well as Apple Valley. And then um, some of our wins, just as a direct result of our partnership, we, we went on this tour and, um, and it, it allowed other staff at the college to learn about the work that we're doing. So it's highlighting our consortia work and our, so also our partnership work. And they have an understanding of adult education and the different things that we do, not just in the realm of the ESL program. Um, we have a brand new facility, so they went in, we introduced them to everyone, all of the key staff, everyone who processes our paper applications and whatnot. Um, in terms of our ESL classes, our ESL attendance and persistence rate are drastically different from those at other sites. So for us, that's a huge win. Um, we have 25 students attending consistently at Apple Valley versus what we have other, you know, in other locations. And we know that it has to do with the, the team and supportive approach. Um, we've also, because of the work that we're doing together, our dean invited us to participate in a promotional video um, that they're putting together for other programs like CTE, nursing, fire. And she said, I think that you guys should do something because you're doing great work with what you're doing in, in Apple Valley. And um, would you like to? And I said, yes, I was already working with the same vendor without even knowing. So it just worked out. We went on site, recorded a video um, it, at Apple Valley Adult School, interviewed our students in various languages. Um, and so we wanted to have that to show to you today, but um, we will have it for the next round. Um, our non-credit application has been revised as a as um, result of our partnership. It's a, so one of those things that surfaced while we were enrolling stu students. It's a barrier. It asks for residency status, and um, you know it's not something that is it's not helping. It's a barrier to enrollment. So we removed that. But I really had to go to our entire leadership team. I had to take it to cabinet. There was a process. It wasn't just hey, could you just remove this? Um, and so as a result of that, we're launching a non-credit application come July and something that they call super glue because I stated to our team that we need to do what we call a one and done registration system because if our students leave, then we, we lose that opportunity to engage them and onboard them. So timing is really crucial. So what our college is doing now is offering that. And at that point, we will go back and you know cross train and say this is how we're going to onboard our students who walk through this door and how we as a you know as a team are going to provide support um, we've improved faculty engagement as we had mentioned um, we have this stellar uh, esl teacher that i was able to work with our dean to hire and bring on and she was an apple valley adult school student <coughs> vvc valedictorian amazing student at the university and is now teaching which is i mean just awesome for us um, so those are sort of the, the wins for our team. Our communication has improved tremendously and we've been able to overcome challenges and, um, and sort of heal from them a little bit and, and are, you know, we're, we're better for it, definitely. Um, and here we go. So part of our site plan is uh, providing um, orientation and this was going to be at the adult school and eventually we do also want to um, incorporate it as Zoom where students can log into the orientation um, virtually. Um, so that was one of our accomplishments in the sense that that's the focus of our, of our program. Our project for DLAC, we thought we would start off with a bunch of different things, but it led into resolving like the non-credit application. The, we now have a, a digital registration form that we didn't have before, but we really needed an orientation specific for our population. What we have now is one orientation for the college community, which includes everything from financial aid and things that don't necessarily apply to our 
our population. And so that's how we got into this plan of we need an orientation because students don't know that they're both Apple Valley and Victor Valley College students. How do they get their student ID? What other CTE courses are available to them? And that's why we did the orientation that Rebecca is going to speak to. Another awesome thing is I was able to go to ASB and said, we need cultural events because our students don't ever see themselves on campus. So for the first event that I was able to host in partnership with our ASB was um, Dia de los Muertos, Dia de Muertos. And it was the first time we had an event that featured um, mariachi in that sense. We did have one graduation, but um, it was really neat to bring that and our ESL students were able to come and participate. Um, and then the Cinco de Mayo, like a week before, our president said, what are we doing for Cinco de Mayo? And I'm like, we can do something. So ASB again comes to the rescue. And this picture in the middle is with our ESL students from Apple Valley. Mm -hmm. So just to demonstrate the engagement and how welcome they feel, it was their first time stepping on our campus. So um, really awesome to be able to invite them to come to a celebration and a party. They danced for three hours straight <laughs> and we were all in the middle, you know, and so it was really a wonderful celebration and way for to make them feel welcome. So now they know, oh, that's the building where you go get your student ID. And we had information about the courses that we offer, but it was different, you know, it was a celebration. Um, we also have, um, to, actually today, Asian American and Pacific Islander Cultural Festival. We shared that information with Apple Valley as well. And all of our sites, you know, um, ESL uh, school programs outside of the college campus. So celebrations, we're also hosting in the upcoming year an ESL celebration for um, our community. They're, we're bringing them out on campus, inviting their families and we're going to issue their certificates for the level one, level two, level three. Our you know, superintendent will come and we'll probably have a guest speaker. Um, in the past, we've had a business owner that owns the um, edible arrangements and he was an ESL student. Um, so we're just excited to do things like that for our community. And so um, I just think one of the main things for orientation is, um, you know, our goal, our mission is to serve our students and to make sure that they feel welcomed. Um, and so with that orientation, I think that it really does speak to that um, and making it simple. Um, so uh, apply orientation and assessment registration. That's your matriculation. Um, and then during the or orientation, showing um, how to videos, but also pictures just to kind of um, give a uh, visual on the building and what it looks like and what to expect when they do go visit. Um, this is our main building, so I, um, I always say this is an important building because this is where admissions and records is at, uh, financial aid, um, all of the special support programs are located in this one building. Um, and then during the orientation, um, you know, starting college can be very daunting and scary, and especially for students who are ESL. And so providing the computer, okay, let's log into your MyBVC portal. This is how you access your student email account. Um, this is how you request your student parking permit because if you go to campus, you don't wanna get a ticket. Or um, you, how do you get your student ID card? And you want that because you can use that as a discount throughout the community or use it as a free city bus pass. A lot of our students ride the bus for free, so have that student um, ID card on you. So all of these little details, uh, making sure that they know we are here to support you and um, walk you through this process. So some of the things that Apple Valley had to do are what I had to go through in order to make these processes happen or behind the scenes. And I need administrators to know that I had to go to facilities, uh, the assistant superintendent facilities and find out how to get the facilities use agreement in place, get a couple directors on board, go to the cabinet, get them to lobby for me. Um, they also provide child supervision for me from the parenting center. They provide funding for this out of LCAP because they think it's worthwhile. Um, and we provide child supervision based on a model used during the pandemic for all of um, the ESL classes, um, whether they're mine or theirs. Apple for All also provides um, a conversational ESL class right now, and we are going to be providing citizenship classes and ESL level one next year. Um, we hope to provide a model that we can duplicate throughout the consortia. <clears throat> and here we are, the Valley Girls. The team barrier, <laughs> our barriers and challenges and how to break those barriers. It's two sites, one team, one project to become one. 
from Y to H, helping students transition to VVC, onboarding rules and duties for our, the Valley girls. Apple Valley, we're providing facilities, furniture, childcare, information technology support, onboarding ESL walk-ins, and lab scheduled time for CASAS testing, because we have to share those facilities so that we all get the points we need for our WIOA. Also, I had to make a lot of friendships with um, maintenance and operations because I didn't have any money for furniture, for the nice picnic tables we have, but I also <laughs> provide a construction course. And I'm like, hey, don't you need your guys trained in blah, blah, blah? Aren't they adults? Send them over or need some free stuff. When you get something good, bring it by. And we, <laughs> so we have, I mean, they have been very generous with us, providing us with lots of things. They're very, the whole district is happy to see what's happening because it supports the family. We're supporting the moms and the dads of the students. Oh, just some of the things that we had to do to um, that are, I have a, the concessions our, our district had to make. We had to adjust our academic calendar so that it starts and in lines with Apple Valleys, which is something that you think you could do easily, but you can't. Because each of our courses is 108 hours and we had to figure that out with the holidays. Um, we also had to find a faculty member to teach outside of our traditional semester. Our semester begins in February or September, so they have to come in a whole month or two earlier. But because of the environment and where they're at, I have to say we haven't really had that much of a problem with um, finding faculty. Um, we had to really share with our administration, at least on my end, and I believe it does as well, why we are having a faculty member and our team participate in DTAP, DLAC and OTAN. So they know what D DLAC and OTAN is. I really had to print the modules, I typed a memo, and provided the justification and also the resources that we're going to be needing and the outcomes that we expect by the end of this term, which is why the YouTube channel, the YouTube, the resources, the how-to videos, and the orientation video um, specifically tailored to our ESL population. So we're gonna, you know, th those are things that we've had to demonstrate and um, we take them for granted, but um, it's really advocating for O10 and DLEC. So our being here um, means a lot and we know that they know that there's value in what we're doing here as well and um, so um, one other plug for DLAC and OTAN is I'm a part of a leading from the middle team developing a leadership academy for our college and the components of this leadership academy are amazing and so I've shared with that team what we're doing and they're impressed and they're like we could use that we could use that we could use that so um, instructional supplies at Apple Valley, we've had classroom sets of books put in over there because we needed those resources there, additional headsets, um, adapters for the uh, computer lab because they, ours didn't work, so things like that that we didn't know right away and we had to figure out and then of course testing has always been, you know, we had to coordinate that, the use of the lab. And then for our next steps, um, definitely uh, we want to create, um, create an ESL YouTube channel. And this would be for mm -hmm. students who they can go to something, get a QR code, and how do I access my student email? You know, click on it. And so I was able to create captions and then able to um, uh, figure out how to use captions, but in different languages. Um, and so I actually learned that from OTAN, which is super awesome, but I want to learn more. So I'm hungry for, for that um, because I got it, but I feel like it's not perfect. So that's one of the, the next steps, but also the support, but I, we would like. And that's, I think we're getting, um, not to the end, but, um, but other steps that we're going to be taking at our school to support, because the good thing is that they listen to what the students are saying it's not our ideas we hear what the students say especially front office uh support uh, we hear what they're saying and we say you know what the students are saying they need this we set up three computers in our main office to make sure that when the students are coming in um, they have access to that right there and then we were talking about a google form or something else where they could get an appointment because sometimes they need something in hand they need to know like did you hear what I'm saying? Did you take it? So we'll, you know, be working on that. So it's our shared calendar um, and involving our students. But yes, I think I'll take your place. Yeah, so those are all the stuff we're going to be providing on our campus. And um, hopefully we'll help to get the students to enroll, ease everything they're going through, because we want to ease the process. Because sometimes that's all that's stopping them. They're afraid of the process. So we're hoping that we'll be able to buffer that a little bit for them. Um, 
And what do we get from DLEC? Um, go ahead, Adele. Resources, um, the curated, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> the resources such as the curated curriculum, free curriculum, um, digital curriculum, the teamwork guidance is invaluable, uh, technology support, just ideas to work around barriers we have. Thank you. And then, ta-da! Ta <laughs>